More fun than movies, this is Trailer Told, a YouTube channel in the world. Thank you for clicking. Check out the playlist for a different video. Subscriptions are a big boost. Ratings for games in this podcast are pending. Welcome back to the official Xbox podcast, the only podcast coming to you from inside Xbox. And all this week, we are diving deep into games you've seen at the Xbox Game Showcase. If you want to watch the other episodes, definitely check them out at youtube.com slash Xbox, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. And I have a very special guest co-host, I should say, with me today, the fans lover, the viewers lover, it's Tina Mini. Tina, Hello. how are you? I'm doing great. So excited for this kickoff of a really incredible week that you are hosting for us. You know? So thank you. I'm cracking my knuckles. I'm getting ready. This is going to be a tough one, but I'm so excited. Like, <laughs> a fun one. Exactly. To your point, though, like this is going to be an exciting week. We just came off of the game showcase, and now... Like, we're going to learn a little bit more about games, but uh, we have a special guest with us today. We do, we? and even more special guests, and one of my personal <laughs> faves, it's Carrie Patel, Game Director on Avowed. Welcome back, Carrie. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah. Oh, man, you have been to the studio several times now. Yeah, exactly. It is such a treat that you spend so much time out here with us. We had you on Extended Showcase last year. We did an interview. This was after, you know, one of the very first forays into Avowed, so that was very exciting. And then we actually had you on this podcast yes. with a slightly different visual design. Yeah. The cheese set is gone. The cheese yeah. is gone. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Jeff is very happy about that we got some like you know podcast mics now which i'm very excited very about very yes um but yes you were here to go deeper into some extended gameplay following developer direct which was earlier this year um incredible show incredible viewing from the team and it was so fun to get this deeper dive so now we get to do that again but following showcase so right. man you are spoiling us in the audience That's <laughs> well right. it's great to be here and i'm definitely excited to show off what the team has been working on and excited to take a deeper dive into story today Ooh, well let's talk Love about that. that so as Tina mentioned at, after the developer direct we had you on the podcast and i got i just got to make a call back like that was received so well like it was just great watching the comments and everyone like this makes me want to play the game and so kudos to you and the team i'm curious from your perspective and the team's perspective since then what's been going on like i'm sure as you get closer to the release date like a lot of things are coming into play so tell us a bit about that time yeah it's it's a really exciting part of the development process because you've got so much that's so far along you know your content your gameplay your systems and you're really just you know investing those final touches that final layer of polish like pushing everything to be as good as it possibly can um you know trying to make smart decisions not crazy ones <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was great to see the, the reception after Developer Direct. Um, one of the things that I know folks called out that we spent a lot of additional time on was refining that sense of hitting, which we're going to see some of in our in our footage today. Um, so yeah, it's really just taking everything that's almost there and pushing it over the finish line and really getting to turn this into the game that we all on the team want to play as well. Yeah, and I, I just want to build off of that a little bit because we were talking about you before y'all came. We were talking behind your back, uh -oh. but in a good <laughs> way. Good things. <laughs> but like, I feel like to your point, Obsidian has this je ne sais quoi, mm. to use my little French that I know very little of. <laughs> Um, one statement that was it <laughs> yeah that's that's really all i know um but no it's like this something special that you all have where not only do you have the community aspect who love games grounded pentiment all these great games but also just the team like the cohesiveness i got to visit the studio a little bit uh late last year and just walking through the office it was very evident why your games always come together and are just so great it's just because you have that cohesive unit so um it's great that that time that you spent since then has been used just like polishing the game like you said and making it awesome so i'm excited to play a little bit later oh yeah me too and but before we jump into yeah. the the deeper dive gameplay do you want to just set up for us both what about is just in case anyone out there doesn't know um, but also what we just saw at the Xbox game showcase with the new trailer sure so Avowed is an upcoming fantasy action RPG um, for players who are familiar with the pillars of eternity games this takes place in the same universe but it is not a sequel the style of gameplay is obviously very different um, the cast of characters is mostly different but we'll get <laughs> to that um, but yeah it's basically just bringing our players to the world of Aora with a really immersive action forward um, really fun fresh take on the pillars world and from the trailer we just saw now we've met a few of our key characters. So part of what we wanted to do with this trailer is really set up for the player the world you're stepping into and the role you're stepping into and also the choice that's in front of you for how you want to inhabit and uh, live out that role in the game. So the very first voice that we hear from at the beginning of the trailer is the Emperor of Adir, your boss essentially. Mm -hmm. He's sending you to the living lands to get to the bottom of this soul plague called the Dream Scourge, find out what's causing it and find a way to stop it. The next person we hear from is Inquisitor Ludwin, who I'm very excited to have playing such a big part in Avowed. Um, players from Deadfire might remember her as a side character in one of our very interesting side quests, but in Avowed, she's pretty central. And her whole belief is that the Dream Scourge is really just symptomatic of larger problems, a larger sense of chaos and disunity and destructiveness at the heart of the living lands. And in the world of Pillars of Eternity, souls and essence, which is the stuff of souls, it manifests physically. And so she might be onto something. And then the very last person we hear from is Giada, who's one of the companions that we'll meet in our journey. And she's taking a different perspective. She's saying this chaos is part of who we are. It's part of what makes the living lands special 
Don't try to tame it. Don't try to end it. Embrace it and cherish it and, and kind of nurture and tend to it. So again, what, what that really sets up for the player is this is a big world. It's got adventure and danger, and it's also got a lot of choices to make. And it's going to be up to you to decide, you know, what it means to be the envoy of Adir in the Living Lands and what it means to set things right in this place. Yeah, yeah, so to your point, that kind of like obsidian formula, 100%. that player choice and some of that moral intrigue too. like what decisions are you going to make in a moment by moment? Yeah, and I think that's what players, uh, as you said, like that's what players really want. Like they want to feel like they have some agency. They are going to be able to interpret the story that you all build and kind of act on that. And so, um, let, but let's get into the gameplay because just like a little bit after Developer Direct, you've brought some new gameplay for us mm -hmm. to watch. And so let's check some of this out. Tell us a bit about what we're seeing here. So we're going to start out in Emerald Stair, um, which is one of the regions you'll get to explore over the course of the game. Um, we're not too far along, um, but we have here a lovely nighttime scene. I think this region in particular looks fantastic at night. Not Very because, stunning. Yeah, thank you. Um, and here we have some Sporlings attacking Yatsli, who is going to be one of our other companions. And you were charging up like your bow and arrow there, and then you're also kind of trying to slice your way through what looks like some very thick top. <laughs> Top heavy, <laughs> swirling yeah. armor here, and and you're right. We are struggling a little bit. Yeah, they're giving me a run for your money here. Yeah. Like, like... We'll, we'll we'll fix that. So okay. part of the problem is we've just transitioned out of a out of an earlier region, and so we haven't upgraded our gear yet. So if we look like we're struggling against these little mushroom guys, it's because we haven't upgraded our weapons so that they're really up to par with the enemies we're going to face here. So there's a, a lot of hacking and whacking, but we'll fix that in short order. Oh, fantastic, people! <laughs> I was about to lose my wits. You wouldn't happen to have a ladder on hand, would you? So this is still fairly early into the game, too, the setting of Emerald Stair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, and there we have Yatsli. Yeah, she's a she's a wizard. She's very fun. She's uh, she's a little risque in a way that I think is is makes makes her a lot of fun to talk to. She's got some very good banter's with the other companions. Um, but yeah, she's just she's just a little lightning ball of a lot of personality. Um, yeah, and you so, see the options yeah. here, by the way. Also, uh, one of the great things about your game is, of course, dialogue options. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how that's playing here. So you noticed uh, with a couple of those that we had a little symbol at the front of those options. So as this is an Obsidian mm -hmm, game, um, mm -hmm. some of the options available to you are dictated by choices you make at character creation, choices you make as you level up your character. So some of them are tied to specific attributes. Some of them are tied to specific backgrounds that you choose at the beginning of the game. And a lot of those will really, you know, in different cases, either add some different flavor personality or possibly a different outcome to that conversation. Um, here we're really getting to know her as a character. And so, you know, we're, we're just kind of choosing the tonal direction of this conversation. Yeah, she's she, a little, yeah. She's says you're tall, striking, and well-toned. It is so like much. she's flirting yeah. with us. She so is. What would happen if we pass the conversation check for the flirtation option, which I assume is this first one? Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll have to see in a bit. But um, <laughs> but yeah, if, if you flirt with Yatsli, she will flirt back. She That's seems like a see. flirtatious type. If you keep encouraging her, she's going to climb you. <laughs> Careful, darling. I already have a lover. A good one. Skilled with his hands. He always carries a ladder. She rebuked me. <laughs> oh, did, oh, no. Well, you know what? Maybe, yeah, maybe you keep trying, but I no. Check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, like, uh, visually speaking, like, I think this is the first time you all are also showing, like, gameplay at night, right? Yeah, so we do have a dynamic time of day, and, Ooh, um, okay. yeah, our environments that, yeah, nice. yeah, have some, some very lovely looks at different times of day. We've definitely shown a lot of daytime footage. We've shown some golden hour footage. Um, but again, Emerald Stair looks really stunning at night. Yeah. It's very colorful, very lush. We've got all the, the fungi. And then one thing we're going to see as we come over the hill here is all of this equipment that the Animancers of the town of Fior have made. And so Animancy in the world of Pillars of Eternity is basically soul science. It's about studying and manipulating the essence that makes up souls and the essence that is ambient in the ether. Quite controversial in the world. <laughs> yes, it is, which is something we get into in this region. Um, but yeah, so this is a little enclave of, uh, of Animancers who were kind of free to study, you know, outside of the, uh, you know, the watchful eye of any larger authority um, here in the Living Lands. But yeah, what it, what it means aesthetically is they have this really lovely equipment with this wonderful purple glow that just looks great at this time of evening. Yeah, 100%. And so they are also impacted by the by the dream scourge as well. They are, area. yes. Mm -hmm. They've they've discovered something wrong in the ether, and you're coming here to sort of see what the Animancers have figured out. All right, and now I'm looking at this. It looks like we're heading into the party camp. Um, can you tell us a little, bit, a little bit about what this area is and its significance for the player? Yeah, so party camp is one of my favorite spaces in the game. It's both your your narrative hub and also your upgrade hub. Um, we can see here, I'll just call third person, out. Yeah. Yes, we do have yeah. third person. Um, a lot of the footage we're going to see today is in first person, but we do have a third person option for players who prefer it. But yeah, in party camp, that's where you'll get to know your companions better. You can kind of get to know their backstories and sort of, you know, get to know them better as individuals. You can also hear them getting to know one, one another through their banters at camp, which is always super fun to eavesdrop on. And it's also where we can upgrade our gear. So we've got our, our party stash where we can stow a lot of extra equipment. We've got our upgrade screens. And here's where we're taking some of our uh, older gear that we picked up in the previous region, and we're going to upgrade it so that we're better equipped to fight the enemies here. 
Yeah, yeah. Sporlings. Yeah, Watch out. coming back. Oh, yeah. We're gonna be way better. But I want to touch back on what you said around the banter around with with your companions. I've always found that like in those kind of camp areas and in, in games just in general, like that's where I love. Yeah. And I love that you all are including banter between the uh, the companions other companions because well, yeah. that makes it feel more alive. Like mm -hmm. you're you're just listening to the uh, banter, but. Is there a conflict between some of the companions? Uh, you yeah, know, they have their different dynamics. takes on the yeah. dream scourge and like what you should do with it. Exactly. Yeah. So what can we expect to hear when we're listening, eavesdropping in on the banter? So you'll hear a lot of different things. You know, one thing we really wanted to create with Party Camp was this sense that, you know, you're adventuring and exploring together through this big wilderness, all these different landscapes. And Party Camp is this quiet space where you can all kind of huddle together, share a moment of respite. And, you know, the pace and the tone of everything is a lot slower and quieter. So some of the banter is going to be kind of quirky and fun as these characters get to know each other and kind of dig into their different personalities personalities, their different eccentricities. Um, some of it's going to be a little more somber as they, you know, kind of reflect on different events that y'all have seen, different things y'all have gone through together. And then yes, uh, as you get to harder decisions in the game, there are going to be moments of conflict where they disagree on what the right course forward is, or they disagree on maybe actions that you've taken up to this point, and they're kind of hashing it out with one another. So it's it's really just where these characters get to come to life a lot more. So you're going to be judged the whole time. Because no. <laughs> I'm a controversial king. We're going to be picking some controversial decisions, so I love to see that. I, I love those that kind of banter, too because I know in my heart the decisions I want to make, but absolutely the more connected I get to certain companions or characters, mm -hmm. they can totally influence by their judgment, yeah, their cool point. judgment. Yeah, so yeah. I'll sometimes, you know, start to actually take that into account. I love the party camp moments, sitting by a campfire, and certainly getting stronger, Yeah. which yeah. Um, my understanding is we're picking up some, not just uh, upgrading some of our weapons, but also picking up some new skills, which you can do in this party camp kind of downtime, too. Yeah, so you can upgrade your skills and abilities anywhere as you level up throughout the course of the game. Um, that's one of the things we're doing right now, so uh, on certain level up milestones, we'll get to upgrade our attributes, which we just did. And on every level up milestone, we'll get to pick a new ability. So um, in this playthrough, it seems like we've got a couple points sitting in reserve. So we're spending these on different abilities in our different trees. And one of the really fun things about the way these are set up is you can really mix and match freely between them. So if you want to be all wizard, you can, you know, build entirely throughout that skill tree. If you want to mix and match, make a battle mage or make, you know, someone who can be a little stealthy in certain moments and a little more aggressive in others, you have a lot of freedom to do Sounds that. Sounds like me. I like that one. I'll yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've seen a lot of Tanglefoot in mm -hmm. previous trailers, and I think we just unlocked Fan of Flames, mm -hmm. which will help us get through these brambles, right? So we're, we're not only stronger, but now we can actually progress in the environment in Emerald Stair with a little bit more skills at our, at our yes. hands. Yes. Yeah, we, we wanted to try to, you know, as much as possible, give the different abilities that players can can pick up. Um, you know, obviously uh, solutions in combat, but also solutions in exploration. And so, you know, there's there's almost always more than one way through a particular barrier, but you'll have, um, you know, weapons, your own abilities, uh, spells, weapon enchantments, sometimes even your companions who can, you know, use their environmental abilities to help you get through barriers like that, As again, as you build the character you want to play. Okay, so we've, now that we're coming out of the camp, We've uh, upgraded our equipment, we've upgraded our swords, so theoretically these guys should be easier now. Yes, and you'll notice it's taking fewer hits oh, to yes. bring him down. Yep, they're flying. Here. Look at him, he barely stood a chance. <laughs> yes, we've got some nice blood effects as we're slicing through them. Yeah, so is that like new animation as well? Um, new, new sound effects and animation as you're kind of upgrading your, your swords yeah. and other items? Yeah, we want to make sure that players are getting clear feedback sure. as to when their gear is effective and when maybe they need to go back to camp. So it looks, it feels, it sounds different when you're playing with appropriately leveled gear. And this guy's yeah. a little different looking. Yeah. What's his deal? So this is a caster. So, you know, all of our enemy families will have different unit types among them. And we've seen a lot of these little melee spoilings who just run at us. And it's it's very cute, actually. It's one of our favorite little animations on the team. Um, but you also have these caster units that can obviously attack you from a distance, do quite a bit more damage. Um, and we have a few other unit types that we haven't met yet. But we're going to try to take this guy out because he's a little more dangerous than the small guys. Yeah, taking a few more hits than, yeah. than them. So when you build up enough stun on an enemy, you can kind of queue up an attack like that that does a lot of extra damage. And will also, if it doesn't take them out, out right, it'll at least give you some distance from them. So those are great to get if you can. Nice, and a little bit more traversal here, which I love to see. Adds that verticality that we that we uh, that we love that allows players to I guess discover new things in the game and maybe some hidden things. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very fun mechanic to be able to build content around because, like you said, you can really reward your curious players by hiding a lot of uh, a lot of secrets, a lot of fun, a lot of storytelling, and nooks and crannies throughout the levels. And we did just pick up that godless vase, so yes. we've got our item that yatsley has been asking us for. Yes. So can you remind us too, as we're, we're um, looks like we're approaching her now, actually. So what we're what we're kind of exchanging here? Yeah. So Yatsley is a scholar of the godless, and the godless are the ancient people who used to have it, inhabit the living lands. Um, they have been gone for many, 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 many years, but we see their ruins throughout the different regions of the living lands. Um, so Yatsley studies them. They are called the godless because they are not recognized as uh, worshipping in their art any of the gods of Aora that people know of. Um, so we're getting, she wanted this artifact um, as, you know, part of her studies. So even without a ladder, we were able to fetch it for her. 
Oh, and we just saw a quick flash of ourselves, yeah. actually. Um, and we are, uh, actually, if you could explain to because we are godlike. Yes. Um, we are almost the opposite of Yasli in that way. Yes. So uh, what does that mean in the world of, like, the, the universe in general and, and why we look the way that we look here? Sure. So in the world of Pillars of Eternity, a godlike is uh, a member of any kith species who, whose soul has been touched in some way by one of the gods. Um, you can play as a godlike in Pillars 1 or Deadfire. Um, in Avowed, you are definitely a godlike. And being a godlike will manifest in a number of different ways, but one of them is you usually have a, a unique physical appearance that manifests in some way on your face and or head. Um, now with Vowed, you can choose exactly what that manifestation looks like. This lichen-like growth is one of your options, but you will have some that are a lot bigger and more dramatic, and you'll also have some that are a lot subtler. Um, you know, but either way, you have a connection to one of the gods. The thing that's unique about you is you don't know which one. And most godlikes of Aora, um, it's very well known, you know, which god they share a lineage with. Uh, for you, it is a mystery, and that's one of the things you'll get to explore uh, in your journey of, through Avowed. Yeah, and I love the customization because I think just generally speaking, people love to customize yeah. the character they want. So maybe again, like you go a little bit more uh, obvious here, or maybe you go a little subtle. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see like players or, or not players, but like other people in the world like reacting to sort of your your godlike appearance? You will because it is it is very unique, um, and there aren't many godlikes left in the world of Aora. So um, you are doubly unique in this case. Oh, nice! Oh. I'm going to be showing it off and be like, yeah, yeah I'm a godlike. All right. So treat me as <laughs> yeah. such. Mm -hmm. Well, so some people think that's very cool. Some people think it's very oh. spooky. So, you know, different different cultures and individuals have different ways of relating to godlikes. So you might get some, you'll get a number oh. of reactions. And that's the thing is that godlikes are quite rare. So they yes. are kind of intrigued by it when they see you and they recognize that you are different. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Now Yatsui is sending us somewhere else, right? So we've, we've gotten her vase. Um, she's going to return to her studies. Uh, she will join our party at some point, Ooh, but not right, right away. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So this is a quest that takes place uh, along, along the crit path and Emerald Stair. So you can tell we're still in the same overall region. Um, so we're working with one of the Animancers in the town of Fior, um, and he's going to help us try. He's going to try to help us diagnose what's going on with the Living Lands. But in order to do that, he needs the heart of an Audragon. And an Audragon is essentially a nymph with, you know, sort of the skin and appearance of Audra. Um, and he needs, you know, the heart for the essence that it contains. So he sent us uh, into this glade to go retrieve this heart. Um, this glade is inhabited by a bunch of Delamgan, who, as you can see, uh, are a lot more dangerous and a lot more aggressive than the Sporlings we encountered. Um, you know, Delamgan in, in the World of Pillars are fairly territorial, so we're kind of bringing this on ourselves. Uh, he did warn us that they wouldn't take kindly to us just marching through their territory, and we might have an easier time of it if we can avoid conflict. But conflict's also fun, so in this case, we're just you know swinging our sword and going on in. And you're right about them being a little bit harder to take down. We are definitely having to utilize everything in our arsenal here to, to take them down. Yes, yes. And you're seeing a, a few different unit types here. We've also got casters. Um, these have some very long kind of whippy arms that mm -hmm. they can get us at a medium distance with and a little area of effect attack. Um, but they do eventually go down. But like you said, it takes more work. Yeah. Now we're approaching what I'm assuming is a very special character. Can you tell us a little bit about? Yeah, so this is the Delamgon Queen. Uh, she has the Audragon Heart, and I'm sure she'll be super cool with how we just yeah. mowed through her I mean, followers. What could go wrong? We have to do what we have to do, right? Yeah, well, yeah. She's she queen of no one now. <laughs> Right. Right. Take everyone out, right? I'll let you see what she says. Uh oh, but yeah. wait, no. Yep, she she can sense what we've done and she's not happy about it. So many of my kin are dead by your hand. The time for words has passed. It's a good thing we like fighting because we're gonna fight some more now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hello. The back of forces have arrived, and now we are, yeah, we're in trouble. Um, so, but we're going to leave that uh, a, a little mystery, right? I'm assuming. Yes. I don't want to give yes. everything away. So, what are we looking at here? This is us kind of respecting kind of how our character plays, right? Yes. So, if you find that you want to try out a new suite of abilities, if you want to approach a particular piece of content like this one in a different way, you can respec. Um, and you might have seen popping up at the beginning of the screen here. There is a cost to doing so, but if you're willing to pay it, you can try out a whole new set of abilities. So, what we're doing now is we're specking into a lot of ranger-related uh, abilities. Um, and I think a couple wizard ones as well. So the most important one of these is Shadowing Beyond, which is a level five uh, ranger ability. And what that does is it gives us the ability to essentially kind of open up a rift in the here, which is the physical world, and travel through the beyond, which is kind of the, the invisible spiritual world, um, in order to, to move through the environment. So what this means is that as long as we don't engage them, these characters can't see us. And as long as we keep our essence meter up, um, this ability will remain active. So this one is constantly draining our essence, which is the soul energy that we use to power our special abilities. Abilities on our spells. 
You can see we're passing some cover grass as well. So if we wanted to be a little more conservative with our power usage, we could duck into that grass, kind of watch the patrols and avoid using this ability quite as much. But in this case, we're gonna use it to get to this uh, little safe nook right here. So if you're an expert stealther, you could possibly do this section in stealth without that ability. Just if with you're the good, grass, just yeah. sneak it around. Grass, Challenge yeah. accepted, right? Yeah. 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 And here we're re-upping on our, on our uh, potions so that yeah. we can build up that essence. essence. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, we're going to continue. And we've also found a little side route here. So again, we, we like to offer uh, different ways for players to approach our, our content, um, especially big potential fights like the one uh, kind of in the glade here. So this is a little side path that you can see still has some enemies in it, but for a player who's very careful um, and either willing to use that cover grass or you know willing and able to use uh, Shadowing Beyond, they can get through without causing a ruckus. So if you fight this Sporling, will the others be alerted to it? Or could you get away with like one kill and then... It depends how close they are. Ooh. So they do have a shout radius, mm -hmm. but it is not infinite. So if if there isn't anyone close by, and if you're mm -hmm. pretty fast, you might be able to get away. Yeah, but you like can that. see there's oh, yeah. one right yeah. there. So you never know who's exactly. hiding in a little nook. Exactly. Right? I'll kick that one off the cliff. <laughs> I'm like, get out of here. But I'm, I'm excited to see players how they tackle it because I'm sure there are going to be people who decide not to use the essence at all and mm -hmm. like really like want to show their mastery of that stealth aspect. And so here we are. Uh, heading... It's always a trade-off, right? It you is. know, you, do you want to loot all the dead bodies, or right. do you want to mm -hmm. take the peaceful Support. path and possibly open up some other dialogue options, which tends to be how I play. Ah. <sighs> A welcome visitor. It has been so long since one of your kind has walked in this grove. You know, in this case, the Dalamgon Queen has recognized that we haven't killed all of her followers. And so uh, there's a little more of an opportunity to talk with her. Um, she recognizes that we are godlike. She might even recognize what kind of godlike we are. Um, but yeah, in this case, she will give us the heart willingly, um, and she'll allow us to leave the glade peacefully because we chose. And she's quite an ancient being, so there's a lot that she knows. You mentioned that, you know, she might even know where we come from. She might, yeah, yeah. Of course, the, the thing is, you know, Delamgon are, they're, like you said, they're very ancient. Um, they, they're they not really part of Kith society, so um, it's hard to get too many straight answers out of them sometimes. Um, yeah, there's some vagaries yeah. in there, but enough yeah. to kind of pique our interest. But then she gave you the heart, and she said, take it and go in peace. Yeah, exactly. And there you go. We came in peace, and we left in peace. Boom. Look at that. Peace. Rules. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Well, I think that's all the gameplay that you, you and the team brought out here today. Thank you again so much. It's been so insightful and such a fun opportunity to walk through it all step by step with you. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about it a little bit after Developer Direct, but like the trailers that you all make are always so great. But then getting to like talk to you and see what the team has built and deliver, especially for the Xbox podcast, is always great to see and dive deeper into those details, dialogue options, how you tackle the game. Like all those things are so important for us to see, like how we're going to be playing the game. Yeah, when it so releases. much detail and intricacies. But yeah. is there anything else that you want to leave the audience off with before we sign off on this episode? Well, really excited for players to experience this game for themselves. Um, again, the team's been working really hard to just to just really put the rest of the experience together, get it all polished, get it across the finish line, and we're all really stoked to see how players fill that player-shaped hole at the at the middle of our game and what kind of role they choose for their envoy and how they choose to solve the conundrums in the living lands. Oh, Us too. I know. Cannot wait. Carrie, thank you so much for stopping by. Please give the team our best uh, and excited to see the game a little bit later on. And with that, that wraps up today's Avowed episode of the official Xbox podcast. But of course, we've got a lot of others, very special episodes for you to check out later this week. Here's the schedule, and we're looking forward to welcoming more guests and developers from around Xbox. So make sure to join us back here tomorrow. And in the meantime, check out anything you may have missed on youtube.com slash Xbox and on podcast services by searching for Xbox Podcast. Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, all.